Welcome you all for the next video on LD spice modeling and simulation of NMOS inverter with the resistor below. So we'll be seeing five different analysis with respect to NMOS inverter with resistor below, starting with DC transfer, transient switching analysis, rise time, fall time, includes timing analysis, propagation delay, and power dissipation analysis of NMOS inverter with resistor below. Usually, we have seen about CMOS inverter where we have one PMOS here instead of this resistive load, and we usually have an NMOS. So, instead of that PMOS here, we have replaced that with a resistive load, and the resistive values have changed. So, basically, if you want to know about the LT SPICE modeling of any particular circuit, the video link is shared in the description box below for the introduction of LD SPICE model of any circuits. So just go through that link so that you will be able to know how to design all these circuits and how to pick the components. So from that, I have just designed the NMOS inverter circuit straight away. So maybe one point I will add on, how to change the resistor value. So if you have to change the resistor value, just click on that because here uh, we know to fix the resistance value as 10K. Now what we have to do is we need to make it as a variable. So what we do is just right click on that. Usually we type here as 10K, 5K ohms, okay? So instead of that, I have kept a variable as capital X and I have given it in the flower brackets. Okay? So after giving that, click OK and just go to SPICE director and just type dot step param space capital X space. What is the start value? We start from 10K and we end with 50K and the incremental value is 10K. So this is how you make the resistance to be a variable, okay, changing variable. So once you fix this, then we can just see the DC analysis of NMOS inverter with resistor load. So instead of uh, telling you all the working principle, I'll just first simulate the DC analysis of NMOS inverter with resistor load, and I'll just explain what happens actually inside the circuit. And for the DC analysis, we do it with the gate voltage and the gate voltage has to start from 0 to 1.5 with an incremental value of 0.2. So this I'll again tell you how to just type this. Just go to right click on your background and just go to your edit simulation command and then DC sweep. The first source is going to be VG type of sweep is linear 0, 1.5 and 0.2. Just click OK here and the width is also set and uh, the length is set to 180 nanometer. Okay, so all these things once you people set, this also can set by right clicking the device. Okay, so width and length values are also set. So now just run the simulation. You can just observe the output. So what is the inverter DC transfer characteristics? We have seen that once you apply logic zero, your output should go to logic high. So this is perfect. You have increased your uh, VG, which is the gate input voltage. This is up to your low logic level and you have obtained a high output. So the inverter is satisfied. Now what happens when you start increasing your VG to a higher logic level, your output should be exactly making a transition from logic high to logic zero. But look at here, the transition is happening, but it is not able to reach to logic zero perfectly. And that is the reason I will just show you the legend so that you people will try to understand because I've changed the resistance value. Initially, it was around 10K. So for 10K, it is still around 0.2 volts. It is not able to reach the logic zero level. So to reach the maximum logic zero, which means equivalent to zero value, I have just increased my resistance from 10K to 50K. So you can see how the graph has changed or how the Output voltage has dropped from 0.2 to almost uh, 0.03 or 0.034 values. Okay, so this minimization is possible with increment in the resistance. So why is that happening? So now we'll just uh, see in the circuit diagram. So once you analyze the circuit, this NMOS inverter will turn on only when it has satisfied the minimum threshold voltage criterion. 
So tell that what will happen, this NMOS will be in cutoff and your output will be equivalent to VDD because there will not be any voltage drop here when you have a minimal resistance. Okay, so for a minimal resistance, your V0 will be exactly equal to VDD and this one will be in cutoff and your input is going to be low. So once you start increasing your gate input voltage, your NMOS will make a transition from cutoff region to saturation region. Once it moves to saturation region, what happens? This VDD will drop to ground level. So this will try to, this NMOS transistor being a pull down transistor and it is capable of passing a strong zero. This will pull down the output VDD to zero and it is possible to reach to the maximum zero level only when you increase the resistance. So only because of that, you will be able to reach to zero level. Now the same NMOS inverter with resistive load, we are going to see the transient switching timing delay analysis. So to understand the timing delay analysis, I have just kept the resistance value to be a fixed value of 10 kilo ohms. And for the transient analysis, I have made the constant DC value, which we have given in the previous case as 1.5. Just right click here. You will get in previously it was none and the DC value which we have given was 1.5. Now we need to for uh, the transient switching analysis, we need to give a pulse value. So that pulse values I've given here, all the on time, the initial value, the delay, the rise time, fall time, on time, the period time, and then the number of cycles it has to repeat. So all those things once we set, and then it is just a simulation where instead of going for the DC sweep, so we were doing the DC sweep, now we will be doing the transient analysis, the stop time, the time to start and the step value, all these things are given here. And then how to write all these uh, fall time, rise time and delay analysis is just go to SPICE director. You'll just type dot MIS, which means your measurement statement editor. So just click OK, it will create this. So once you right click on this, you'll be able to do the applicable analysis, whether it is for DC or for the transient. Now here we do it for transient switching analysis. So we need to set the transient and the result name, what we're going to take it as rise and all the other parameters that we need to fix. So here I have the sample values. So first I will just erase this and look at here, we have the rise time. So first to understand the rise time, rise time is nothing but the time taken for the output to cross 0.2 VDD to 0.8 VDD. So which means in general, output has to cross from low logic low level to logic high. What is the time taken for the output to make a transition from logic low to logic high level? And similarly, fall time is the time taken by the output to move from logic high level to logic low level. So the values we can observe here, so it is the logic high that we have obtained maximum was 1.5 and the logic low level, will, low level will be 0.18. So this we can make the analysis only when we simulate this particular circuit. So first, before this transient timing analysis, first let us do the switching analysis. So just run the circuit and for the transient analysis, we need to verify with respect to the input and the output. So first let me plot the input. Okay. So now just add one more plot and just click on the output node. Now just maximize this, we'll be able to see. So just look at here, this is your VN, where VN, the logic zero is perfect and the logic high 1.5 volt I have given, that also is perfect. Now the V out is, the logic high is perfectly equal to 1.5, but look at the logic low, it was not able to reach to zero. It is held at 0.18, approximately equivalent to 0.18 or equivalent to 0.2 you can take. So it is not able to reach to perfect logic zero and that is because of the resistance level we have kept as 10k as a fixed value. Here we have not made the variations. Because of that I'm not able to reach to zero and you know the technique how to reach to logic zero by increasing the resistance. So that part of analysis we do it only with the DC transfer characteristics. Here for the transient analysis, I fixed the resistor value and I'm not able to reach the logic zero. So that observation is what you need to do. And then for the timing analysis, now after simulating that, now we'll go for all these uh, measurement statement editors. 
Now, first I will explain the rise time. The rise time I have told very clearly. We are the applicable analysis. We are doing it in transient, and all these things we are going to observe only in the output graph. And for the rise time, it has to be logic low from point one eight to logic high level. We have reached up to one point five. So reaching high level was not a problem. So that value I have kept. Now just click on test. It will give you the rise time. Click OK. Then come for the fall. Okay, so all these values we need to set. We need to type it as V of out. Okay, because we need to do the analysis on the output graph, and the fall is fall time analysis is from logic high. Logic high value is 1.5. Logic low level in the graph was almost equivalent to 0.18. Okay, so just check here. It was equivalent to 1.18 or 0.2 also you can give. So that is what we have given here. Okay, so set all these things. Fall will be zero. Because low level, and then just uh, give test, so it will give you the fault. Click OK. Now coming for the delay analysis. For the delay analysis, propagation delay is something where what is the maximum time taken from the input to the output? Okay, what is the time taken from the input crossing 50 percentage of the value to the output crossing 50 percentage of the value? So that is your delay time taken from the circuit to reach from the input to the output side. So for that, just look at here. You will change this as T delay. All these are your own names that you can keep. This is from. We need to start the trigger condition from V of in, and the target is V of out. And for both of them, the high values were equal into 1.5. So we have kept it as 1.5, 1.5, and just. Test the circuit; it will give you the delay. So clear with respect to the transient switching. Once you do the switching analysis, and then you can easily do the timing analysis. Now the one more observation that we can do here is the power analysis. What is the power dissipation of this NMOS transistor? For that, just click Alt on the keyboard and just bring it over your cursor over this NMOS device. So whatever device that you are going to have. Just bring your cursor over this by pressing Alt in the keypad. Okay, so just right-click on this. Just click on this. Okay, so then go to your graph that you already have for the transient switching analysis. I already have added the one more plot. So there you can see the power dissipation. So it was almost around 54 watts, microwatts. Okay, so 54 microwatts. And if you want to exactly view the average power dissipation. Just go, click on the, bring your cursor here. You will see the hand symbol. Just click Control and click on this. You will be able to see the average power dissipation is 11 microwatts for the NMOS transistor with resistor load. Hope you all have understood about the NMOS inverter with resistor load LT spice simulation. We have seen DC analysis, transient switching analysis, and also timing, delay, and power analysis. Hope you all have enjoyed it. Thank you all for watching this video through Electronics Insight channel.